That boy's good. Today we're going to do a couple minutes of flex talking um, and then the second half we're going to go over a project that we all worked on. Uh, Drill started the melody, I made the beat and then we sent it over to Myth who's going to add his sauce to it as well. You'll, um, we'll start with Drill and his melody and, and show us how you made the melody. And here's what's going to happen y'all, y'all, you know, everyone that's watching. So Drill has no idea what we've done well what i've done thus far with the beat right so you're going to get a live reaction from the producer of the melody of the original melody right i almost sent it to him yesterday and then it dawned on me that it would be a better you know it would be a better stream if he didn't hear it until a live reaction. the actual yeah. live for a live reaction all righty so I'll just play it just from the from kind of from the top and then I'll break it down from there. So this is what the the melody that I basically sent out to the group was. So really only four elements in total. Uh, on this though, went from, and I'll be 100% transparent, I'm not always great at playing to, to a click. Uh -huh. uh, so I like to just jot down ideas on the guitar and like, I'll just sit and like loop it up. Mm -hmm. And I, I catch something that kind of, it, it feels good and it mm -hmm. kind of has a pocket to it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I'll go back in and actually put it on grid basically using mm -hmm. the flex time. Okay. Uh, if you put it in polyphonic, you can kind of, so like, for example, if I turned it off, it wouldn't loop perfectly. Mm -hmm. And it kind of uh, sounds like shit. But you'll notice it also, because it's on polyphonic, it will also keep the guitar as you move the notes. It'll keep them in tune with the original sample. So like what was, my, if my guitar was originally in tune when I played it, when I flex tune everything, mm -hmm. it's going to keep it all in tune. Notice how you don't right. get any like yeah. artifacts or anything like that. Whereas some of the other ones, like if it's monophonic and things, it'll try to bend those notes and it doesn't sound as natural. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so nice. I went in after I did, after I basically first step was tracking it in the system. Second step was getting it all on grid. Once I did the cleanup work though, and everything was there, I then went in. Uh, looks like so. Oh, oh amp designer, another yeah. another underrated yo amp. Yo, not for super everything. underrated. It's just I, I, even if the plugin was garbage, right? Just the, look at the interface; like it, it's a, it's beautiful. And then you start <laughs> right. you start right. toggling, and then the microphone is that the microphone in front of the speaker? You can move that. Yep. To, yep. You got man, all of this to move, man. Listen, absolutely. Stop it. Stop it. Fire. One of the other things that slept on in this plugin, if you're a, an actual guitar player, sometimes you don't get that real amp feel when you're playing. Yeah. You actually have the ability through, oops, hold on. Oh yeah, to switch the amp head and everything. So you can get in here to all of like the effect sends, everything else like that for the pedal board side. Mm -hmm. But the other cool thing is, is it's gonna default because it doesn't want to like blow your eardrums out basically. And it thinks that you're gonna want it mix ready. Mm -hmm. So almost all of the amp settings are automatically gonna be tailored back a good amount. Like this is almost 12 dB. So if you're actually playing the parts through the amps and you want it to kind of feel more realistic, you drive mm -hmm. this back up to closer to zero and it'll it responds more like a real amp. It's not yes, as tame. Okay. Um so if you're a guitar player, just a little, I guess a little gem there. All I did with this is I went through and I found a head that was like, I wanted basically something like more in that plexi kind of sound, like a clean. Didn't want it to be overly crunchy. Didn't want it to sound like it was some death metal shit. Um, kind of wanted just to have some grit just to kind of fill out the sound. And then once I had that, I added, oops, let's get this guy. I went in and added the pedal board. 
All I have on the pedal board right now is a delay pedal. Um, just tweak the settings here just so that it gives it like kind of a, it's almost like a ping pong slapback kind of thing mm -hmm. on the guitar. So okay. without it, that's just the amp with the delay. You'll notice it swells. Oh, fire. And so you that's, know, that's kind of, go ahead. Tie dye has to be a new, a new, a new, uh, pedal. I've never seen that pedal before. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's here. Just the down. I mean, you may just not have scrolled all the way to the bottom before it is kind of hidden in the, in the list here. Probably because fun fact, I used to use pedal board to give my 808s distortion. Mm-hmm. Yep. Like yeah. I said, I use it on vocal. I use it on vocal production all the time for like harmonies and stuff like that. Some of the chorus and like the wah wah effects on vocals, especially like R and B type vocals, you can do some cool shit with the background vocals on here. Yeah, yeah. it's a dope. Uh, try stacking, try stacking your eight hundred eight with the lead sound, okay. and then throw this effect on it. Throw pedal board on it, sure. and the amp. Yo. And the amp, really just get it. If y'all tuned over. in, if y'all would have tuned into some of our previous episodes, right. you might have picked that up. You another, know what I'm saying? Another fun fact: when I first started with Logic and I didn't know much about mixing, I needed like a quick mix. I would mm -hmm. take the amp designer, and I think there's a, a Logic, a Logic preset in there, and I would use that to kind of mix the track because you had the bass knob, you had the treble knob, and then you had uh, the mid knob so i would right. just i would just use that to kind of tweak the mix, kind of like a fast because i didn't know anything about mixing but i needed something really quick and fairly decent so right so you, you got use that, it on the master the ten thousand uh, foot mix i would i would put it on the melody and then i would put it on the drums wow okay almost like yeah. a mix bus kind of eq yeah pretty much pretty much. It, it was a poor man's ah. it was a poor man's mix that's what it was gotcha uh once i had this set and i kind of had like the the weird swelly thing going that's it there um uh, nothing like really crazy nothing fancy after that point um and then the second kind of thing that i added to all this was sounds completely like ass cheeks by itself And so you bring in the pedal board and you'll notice I play with another little thing that I'll mention. I play with pre and post amp send for like my effects. Mm -hmm. So you notice on the, on the main one up here, I went amp and then pedal board mm -hmm. versus on the lead. I went pedal board and then amp. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, nice. So I always like, I'll find a sound and kind of see what I like. And then I just will gra I'll grab this and just move it one or one or, you know, one below or one above it and mm -hmm. just see, give it like an AB comparison. And then I stick with whatever one sounds better. I do find some of them you get to, depending on the effects and things like that, you tend to get better clarity uh, depending on which order they come in the chain. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. And then, so you bring in the pedal board on this one. Looks like we had, uh, there's some spring reverb and then some retro chorus. The chorus is synced to the grid so that nothing's out of pocket too wavy since this is pretty wavy with all the reverse shit. Mm -hmm. I didn't want too much stuff to throw it off grid. Mm -hmm. Just kind of gives it almost like that weird, like kind of like surfy vibe. After that, brought in a clean kind of fender, just a like a tweed, just enough kind of breakup to kind of give it just kind of the broken edge so it'll stand out in the mix. Also, I wanted it to have more of the top end, so I used a different microphone than what it typically would have had here on the settings, played with the microphones, kind of tweaked it. Uh, same thing with the cab. I wanted it to be a four by 10. Uh, I found that the, some of the other settings there, it made it sound like it was too tight. If you notice, it's kind of wide. The, ca the, the cabinet is is the, spe the, the speaker, right? Yep, this guy mm -hmm. here. Okay. The actual speaker itself. And like you have all kinds of different options here. So like you have one by 12s, four by 12s, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, and then after that, this is where it gets kind of funky and weird. Uh, <clears throat> I put uh -huh. in flicks. <laughs> I put, I put in a little bit of some crazy effects here. 
Um, so you'll notice that without this, not a lot of movement. You bring this in. Mm -hmm. Essentially takes my shitty boring guitar playing and kind of like amps it up one. Um, so when you bring that in with everything, And then from there, I have it feeding directly into CLA FX. Plug in flex. Here we Plugs. go. Yep. So in CLA here, I basically have it cutting the top and the bottom out. So it's doing the kind of a filtered EQ on this. Uh, just so it's not, it's kind of taming the overall sounds because I don't want it to be the main focal point. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to tuck this under that top element there with, that are actually the guitar chords. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a little bit of drive just to kind of let it sit more forward. And then just a slap delay on it. So without it, with it, pushes it out real far in your ears. Yeah. Definitely. And then with those two elements together, then just so you can hear everything we had so far. which is almost borderline hilarious because if you turn off the plugins and play even that same loop together, it doesn't even sound like the same thing at all. It's completely different. Yeah, different character, completely. Like that's dry. Yeah. So I, I always like to like, I'll come up with something. And then, like I said, I play with all the settings and kind of get it to, to catch a vibe. And then I'll add more, more effects and things like that until it kind of all starts to groove together. So to, to me, if you're not really, 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 really listening, this almost sounds like one guitar. True. Yeah, the, the one guitar True. with like a lot of reverb. Right. Yeah. Heavy it's reverb. just swimming on its own. And then so from there, I was like, well, if everything else is like real, like, you know, kind of dreamy and like floating around, I needed something to kind of bring it back centered mix wise. Uh, so I, I went in and added. Um, let's see. Let's turn that off. I went in and added some low end. Oh yeah, the plug-in flex is real right now. Okay. <laughs> so the setting is basically just like uh it's got just the the two oscillators are engaged. And when the actual preset here, it's very clicky. It almost sounds like it's uh almost like a clav. And so what I did is I basically just went in here and I took back the attack, the attack yeah. so that it has almost no attack at all, and it just kind of it, it almost swells into the low end as it transitions notes. Another cool thing you can do, if you want the second oscillator to be the only thing that's gonna be affected, there is a cool thing you can do in this plugin specifically with low end, like synth and like uh, any kind of like 808 stuff. You can actually hit this and it'll turn on the second oscillator, which then you can actually crank all the lows. And then you can actually put like port and meno bend and things like that. Or if you wanna crank the high end with the second oscillator for like, what you were saying myth with like your lead sound that you layer with mm -hmm. it you can actually control it with that and then you're only applying the portamento and everything to this so your your low end stays centered but then the top end kind of lead that's on top of the bass can bend it separately so gotcha. you don't get a lot of like warbly kind amount. of stuff yeah that's exactly dope. and it's got like the the different and like if you want to it actually you can bend it to certain points so like bend it up to a minor third a major third fourth etc so it's kind of cool oh that is dope so you get some really like wild, especially with like pad sounds, you can get some really wild effects going on. That's but so, okay. I find that I find that that thing is way better personally for uh, for having low end stuff. Right, I'm the low end there. Yeah, let me turn this back off though, because the way it was. Uh, and then you can also, the other cool thing is if you wanted to like create a pattern from scratch in this, I didn't, in this case, I just had it as it was, as I played in the two notes, just so I didn't want it too complex. You can actually go back in here after you've recorded the notes as well. And you can add different patterns MIDI wise on top of them, just within the synth. It has like old patterns from like the eighties and stuff built in. It's kind of cool. Nice. So, uh, this be a dope plugin to make some, some, uh, we, the, we the weekend type beats. Oh yeah, 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 that dark, like almost like Toronto or like that yeah. that that groovy dark kind of sound. Yeah, yeah. 
But yeah, his synthwave sound too that he's been doing lately. Mm. So like that eighties retro. Yeah, yeah. And then from there, I feel like that this by itself. Though it's kind of cool, it, it has zero movement. It's just stagnant. But that's and you can you hear that, that transition there. There's literally no attack hardly at all. And then oh. I I brought in the tried and true. Lex. Let's go. <laughs> Lex. <laughs> Let's go. Let's Myth put me on game. So yeah, if, you, if you're not using this, go get it. It's it's a it changed just a lot of cool things. A lot of cool things you can do with it. Super fire. It's free too. <laughs> yeah, that's the best part. Uh, but without it, <laughs> and then with it. Yeah. And then it's one thing you, one thing that you'll notice as well that gives an additional movement to your point. You hear the movement. Notice that the mix knob here moving on its own. I've got it automated. Flex. 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 So that it's giving you multiple effects within within the one plugin. Oh, yeah. Okay. Just kind of gives it more of that, more of that MGMT kind of like vibe. And then uh, after that, I was like, well, it, now with when you have this loop by itself, I'm like, you kind of have that mid rangey high stuff. You've got your low end covered. And I'm like, well, I just felt like it needed something to drive it more melodically for like kind of an AB section. So then I went in and added uh, just a basic profit sound with yeah. the, with the uh, chorus and the delay. And then I maxed out basically the delay to make it kind of more spacey and swimmy. And then by itself, So that laid over top of everything else. Just kind of gives us some of the high and candy area for it to kind of go out and kind of like sparkle and be pretty. And that's